here, I'm Jeff Rowley. I'm a BJJ black belt with Peter to being 100% Jiu Jitsu here in Torquay, Victoria, Australia. And I've been training for nearly 20 years and these are my seven tips for how to get on the fast track to improving your BJJ game. Okay guys, so tip number one is spend at least a few minutes before every class thinking about your last class. I usually like to do it 15 to 30 minutes before class. So whether that means while you're driving home from work, sitting in the car, instead of listening to the radio, you just have some quiet time and just think, what did we do last class? Oh, that's right, we were doing, um, we were doing a certain type of sweeps, okay? That sweep was really good. There was one sweep that I didn't like. There was one sweep that I really liked and had some success with. And it just puts you straight away back on track with Jiu Jitsu. With Jiu Jitsu, it's all about building blocks. You're adding in one piece at a time and each block builds on the last. So every class is not a new class. You don't want to be building this scattered picture like this. You want to be building on what you did last class and just improving on that and just slowly building, building, building like this. Okay, tip number two is come to class with a question for your professor that's related to your last class and what you were doing. So there'll be something in that last class that just didn't gel with you. If you're doing a couple of sweeps, there was one that didn't quite work. Maybe you're putting your hand in the wrong place. Maybe your leg was in the wrong place. Maybe you're forgetting something. Maybe it just didn't work for your body type. You need to do what I call patching the leaky bucket, okay? If you've got a bucket and it's got holes in the bottom, it doesn't matter how much water you put in the top, if they're all draining out the bottom, it's going to be an empty bucket anyway. Jiu-Jitsu is the same thing. If you keep going to class and filling your head with new techniques, but they're all running out the bottom, you're not going to retain anything. So you need to go in there and go, hey, you know what? One of those sweeps from two nights ago didn't work for me. Um, how do I fix that? Your professor will, will show you how to fix it, patch the hole in the leaky bucket, and then that's before your, your class has actually even started for tonight. So then you can actually start to move forwards. Tip number three, don't just come to class and be the guy that fights everyone and then leaves half an hour later. You might get a good 30 minute workout, but you're not gonna learn anything and you're not gonna retain anything. Tip number four, when you're rolling with higher belts, it's okay to stop the fight and ask for help midway through your roll. So if you're a blue belt and you're rolling with a black belt and the black belt has just swept you over at ease and landed on top of mount, it's okay for you to lay there and say to them, hey, what did I just do wrong? Like, how did you get that sweep so easy on me? And the, if they're a decent black belt, um, or any belt for that matter, they should be able to say to you, okay, what you did wrong was this. You were leaning over this way and your arm was posted on the floor and I just pulled your arm out of the way and you fell over and I just rolled on top. It was a really easy sweep. Then what they might do is, here, why don't we just rewind a little bit, we'll go back to the same position, see your mistake where your arm was in the wrong spot, let's correct that and let's see how the fight will pan out now that we've patched that hole in your leaky bucket. A black belt will be more than happy to do that. The black belt knows he's gonna be the blue belt anyway. So it doesn't affect the black belt to rewind the clock a little bit, help you learn, help you patch a hole. It's gonna make you a better opponent anyway. And the black belt doesn't wanna just have easy rolls with blue belts and lower belts all the time. So don't be afraid to ask a question anytime during a roll. Point number five, spend a few minutes after each roll talking about the match with your opponent, rewind through the fight, all the way back through all of the key moments from the end, all the way back through the fight and work out exactly what happened in chronological order. Let's just say that uh, you finished a match. If they got you in an arm bar, then a lot of people go, oh, you know what? Uh, professor, professor, can you teach me how to defend arm bars? You know, my, I keep getting arm barred. But if you were to talk about the match with your opponent straight afterwards, you would say, what happened before the arm bar? Well, um, your opponent says, well, I mounted you really easily. Oh, well, where were we before that? Um, well, I was in side control and I passed your guard really easily. So you rewind the clock and all of a sudden you realize that the fault was not in defending the armbar. The fault was in the fact that your opponent was easily able to pass your guard and easily able to mount. Now, if you learn better guard defense, which could be as simple as where you place your hands or putting your feet on the hips, then you learn also inside control, how to prevent someone from mounting you. 
you don't need to focus on the armbar defense as much. It's not that end result. So much of the time when I'm rolling with lower, lesser belts, it's the lower belt will make a, a mistake really early in the match and that will define the whole rest of the bout. So you need to finish a match, sit down, really analyze it and then just drill back to it. What was that one thing? And when you find out what that one thing was, again, patch that leaky bucket and make sure you never do that one thing again. That's how you're gonna get better. Tip number six, record everything on video. In this day and age, all you need is your smartphone. Everyone's got one. And you get one of these little cheap gorilla pods and just set it up on the side of the mats when it's free rolling time and record everything. Just ask your opponent and ask your professor. They shouldn't mind. And set up, record everything, and you gotta go home and watch the footage after. And my final point, which is number seven, is to analyze and review that footage that you just took immediately after class. It's super important that you watch it while it's still fresh in your head. You can go over everything that happened. And believe me, when you see yourself rolling on camera, you will look really different than what you thought before. You will see all kinds of openings, all kinds of positions, strange things that you're doing that you weren't even aware of. Um, you know, I do strange things with my hands. Um, I leave my guard wide open sometimes. I grab someone where I didn't even realize I was grabbing him. It was completely unintentional. And you're like, why am I doing that for? Then again, you'll patch that leaky bucket. You'll go back to class next time and you'll go, well, I'm, I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm going to close that guard. I'm not gonna leave that opening there. Um, you'll see an opportunity where you missed a sweep. You'll see an opportunity where you missed a guard pass and you'll see something that you did really good. And then you can focus on doing more of those good things. But watching yourself on camera is a really good reality check for you. And it's gonna really help you to be critical of your own game in a positive way so that you can improve. Just remember, jujitsu and going to class is about improvement and improvement for yourself, improvement for your fellow classmates, improvement for your team. And everyone works together. We all get better together and it makes for a better class environment. So guys, these are my seven tips for getting better at BJJ, getting yourself on the fast track. You'll notice that there was a definite before jiu-jitsu, during jiu-jitsu, and after jiu-jitsu component. It's a lot more than just the rolling itself. It's a lot more than just getting in there and just going hard and then leaving. You've really got to think about your jiu-jitsu game and prepare beforehand and analyze it after. Thanks for watching this. Please subscribe to my channel down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Give me a thumbs down if you don't like it. And check out my other BJJ videos and techniques to help you improve. Thanks for watching.